Now the New Orleans schools. Last night, the NewsHour special correspondent for education, John Merrill, presented his third progress report on the superintendent's effort to fix the Washington, D.C. school system. Tonight, John has a third companion update on a similar drive in New Orleans. School superintendent Paul Vallis is making big changes in New Orleans. We need to move now. We need to start building buildings now. We need to modernize those classrooms now. Let's work to get this quick start process going. Tearing down this school, abandoned since Hurricane Katrina, is just part of Vallis's plan. He's promising that by next summer, this site and four others will have brand new schools. These changes can't come fast enough for Vallis's boss, State Superintendent Paul Pastrak. We haven't had such construction in public schools in the city of New Orleans in the last 18 years. It's, uh, it's, it, this is a real remarkable moment. Tearing down old buildings and putting up new ones? That may be the easiest part of Paul Vallis's job. The real work is here, in the classroom, where you can't just start over. Here, Paul Vallis has to meet students where they are, and in New Orleans, most of them are well behind. Brittany Jackson is no exception. I'm 19. I've been a senior. This is my third year as a senior. Like Brittany, many high school students in Vallis's recovery school district are at least one grade behind. I always had the D's and the L's because I never want to go to class and I never want to do nothing. Students who are behind are at a much higher risk of dropping out. Last year across the district, only 39% of seniors received high school diplomas. Because they've never studied hard enough to do well in high school, because there's no incentive to do well in high school since they're not college bound. So they think, well, I gotta work, I gotta go get a job. Brittany left school last year for a job at this grocery store. But when she gave a customer too much change and ended the day with her register short, it opened her eyes. I had to go back to school in order to get that education that I needed. You know, I can't give the wrong amount of change and I would have got fired from work. So I was like, all right, so either I'm going to go to school or I ain't going to work nowhere because I can't count. Brittany re-enrolled in October, but she's had a hard time making it to school every day. She recently took a second job to save money for a car and is now working 70 hours a week. We got to catch you up because you weren't here yesterday. So, um, Biology teacher Katie Amundsen so has taken it upon herself to tutor Brittany. What's the probability? It would be two over four. And two over four is what? When you simplify it. You Zero point five? It's like point five, right? Yeah. Brittany's really bright. She's a student that I really want to see graduate. And um, so I'm definitely invested. Katie's a first year teacher, one of hundreds of recent college graduates who Paul Vallis sought out to transform his schools. We've got teachers every day that despite the obstacles and despite the real or perceived lack of supports, they're out there, they're doing the job. Stable. Teachers who are enthusiastic, Everything teachers who are committed, stable. teachers who are willing to come in early in the morning and leave late at night. What I want you to do is summarize the definition. So it says, but the problems are overwhelming. Many students have been left back. Others who should have been left back have been promoted. Today, 85% of students across the district are performing below grade level. This is a very tough job. This is a very tough environment. We're educating kids that are way behind. All the kids, all the kids are at least one, two, three years below grade level. I mean, that's, that's a real challenge. In this city, the stakes could not be higher. New Orleans is a very violent city. A lot of the things that kids who don't have high school diplomas fall into are deadly here. It's not just trouble. It sounds dramatic, but it's kind of life or death. On January 12th, a 10th grader was shot and killed on a street corner, two days before his 17th birthday. Paul Vallis attended the funeral. There's drug deals going on, drive-by shootings. The violence that we face um, in our communities is tied to poverty and educational failure and things of this nature. This is the night war. 
This is the night ward area. Here in the night ward, we have a lot of peer pressure. Um, we have a lot of kids that don't go to school. I say it's almost 6.30. Well, finish getting ready for school. Helen Miller, a single mother of five, knows firsthand how crucial it is for her children to graduate. I'm afraid that my son will end up as a statistic, dropped out, on drugs, selling drugs, or dead. Because the average young guy around here has been in jail numerous times. I don't want to see Antoine that way. 